everyone. Welcome to another episode of the JBSAA Founder Spotlight. Today we have Sabrina Smith, founder and CEO of Progeny One LLC based in Illinois. Welcome to this episode. Hi, Dapo. Thank you so much for having me on this. Uh, this I don't want to call it a show, but having this opportunity to just really sit and talk with you about my business. So I'm excited about that and I feel very blessed and grateful. Thank you. Thank you. So let let I guess let's let's start off with your your journey as an entrepreneur. Yeah. Where so, did it start? Okay. So I had this, I've always been on the journey to entrepreneurship. I've tried so many things throughout the course of my uh career, you know, from trying to do insurance to, you know, Avon to Mary Kay to gosh, I all types of stuff. I'll just leave it at that. But what I was on search and journey for is finding what my purpose was in life. And so uh, back in 2016 um, is when I actually started uh, Progeny One. That was just as a DBA at that particular time. And the defining moment that put me down this path actually happened back in 2007 when finally the intersection of my purpose and opportunity came. And this is when I was actually working for an organization and I saw someone train in a way that I've never seen it before. And that's when the light bulb came on to me. So it was that that sparked my desire one day to have my own learning and development company. So I started uh, the business in uh, 2016 and I became an actual uh, LOC back in November of 2022. Awesome. Awesome. So what what does Progeny, Progeny One do? What is, what is it all about? Yeah. So thank you for asking for that. So I guess uh, one of the things that was really important to me really was the name of the business. So I was actually sitting down at the table and it, in the name of my company, I'll start there and I'll didn't like explain what I do, but the name of the company uh, came through prayer and it actually wasn't supposed to be the name of my company. It was supposed to be the name of a book that I wanted to write. So I literally was asking the Holy Spirit, what do I call this thing? Like, what do you want me to call this book? And literally my mouth started to move and these words came out, pro, progeny, progeny, progeny. I'm like, what the heck? Is that a real word? Right. <laughs> The word itself, which I knew was an alignment with my purpose, means to become, to beget, to bring forth. And so I, I wanted to give you that as a precursor because what I do is learning and development. So my job is to actually teach individuals or my corporate partners how to expand their potential uh, through the application of uh, workplace uh, soft skills. So it's not just about talking about it, but really being able to give you skill sets that when you walk outside of a classroom, be it virtual or in per a person, you can actually apply these skills to your professional and personal life to really achieve the goals that you want to achieve for yourself. So uh, that's what we do. We partner with companies and clients to do so. So I do soft skills training. I also am a coach. So I've got my master's coaching certificate as well. So I'll work with client on a one-on-one -on -one basis if they want to do career coaching or either life coaching. So uh, I get to do all those things for my my, my clients. That's very interesting. In a, in a so from a mission standpoint, how we, what 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 would you say what that mission looks like for you for them through your business? Yeah. Yeah, so my mission really is to help to open up opportunities and change mindsets and skill mindsets and skill sets, excuse me, one person at a time. At the end of the day, I'm passionate about people uh, emerging um, as the individuals they desire to be. That is my heart. That's what I'm called to do. So in a teaching or facilitation or coaching capacity, I get to do that. So that's my mission to really be able to plant and water those seeds so that people can sprout up to the people they want to be in this world. Very interesting. Very interesting. In, in terms of the um, the target audience or industries, what kind of industries do you do you help out? You know, this question stumped me when I was a JPS student, <laughs> but it also stumped me throughout the course of the years because it was like you've got to have a target market. Well, here's the deal. My, my corporate clients are leaders at various levels. I have done business um, as a subcontractor for people that span anywhere from, uh, let me just, I'm trying to throw, from social media, I'll just call that company unnamed. Let's just say people use it every single day okay. uh, in California, <laughs> <laughs> right? Silicon That's Valley. <laughs> I've done training for organizations that oversee some of the major retail brands. I've done organizations um, that have 
let's just say one of Chicago's biggest teams in the area of football. <laughs> so I've done construction training. So any place that an organization is committed to developing their leaders to really increase uh, the culture to one that inspires people to come to work and do their best, any place where they're looking to invest in their leaders so that they can really be focused on how we can achieve our goals. Those are my clients. So there really isn't a specific industry. I have I have trained in industries, honestly, that I would have never saw myself being a partner of. Even the toll authority. I've done leadership development training for an expansive amount of organizations. Got it. Got it. So it sounds like from what you just said, you are industry agnostic. Yes. In terms of um, just clients that just want that level, the one level up there their 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 experiences their 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 confidence whatever the case may be it's just industry agnostic across the across the board absolutely awesome. absolutely awesome so let let's you know every every story has a four story or a, uh like let's say the prequel to the sequel um <laughs> when you decided to join to attend JBS what was that what was your why and how, what was your experience like attending JBS? Yeah, so the reason why I said, let me do yes to JBS is because honestly, to tell you the truth, even though I started the business in 2016, I didn't believe in the business. <laughs> I didn't believe in myself. And being a, a member and a student of JBS gave me an opportunity to understand first and foremost, at the root of that, God's purpose for the work that I do. And I always invited God in my work. But I got, a, got got scriptures to align with that so that I have something that I can anchor myself to. I had partnerships with other people with like-minded desires, which is so invigorating because not everybody is called to entrepreneurship. So some folks are like, hey, you do that, but I'm going to stick to my regular nine to five. <laughs> but also, even from a financial perspective, it, one of the biggest blessings, if I can call it that, was right after school, uh, when we finished ABS, I decided that I'd want to get my minority business enterprise certification. One of the things they asked me for was my financial statements. I was so excited when that big workbook that we created in classroom had three years of data in there that I was like, oh my gosh, at first I was like, what am I going to send these folks? And I remembered that from class. So I used that workbook that had all of those formulas in there, made some updates and projections on the business and sent it. And the, the person at the institution said this was one of the best financial reports that they had ever seen. And to tell you the truth, had I not even had that data, I, I wouldn't have known where to start to project those numbers. So between just that there's someone into you as a spiritual or Christian business was very critical, um, but also the, the resources, the tools, even from a place of etiquette. I mean, oh my gosh, I never really thought about when I, you're doing networking. D dude, you, you really want to have just enough to be able to snack and have dialogue at the same time. So it's these small nuggets that you really don't think about in addition to just the basic skill sets that you know you need to work on that drive accountability that really made my experience at JBS um, very worthwhile for the time I spent. Awesome. I believe D Dean Dave will be super happy to hear what you just said about the financial statements. Um, oh my gosh. I, I, I do know I share the same um, joy of attending JBS. Just like you said, they are times that I'm trying to figure out something that I recall, oh, we we have some material, some stuff that we did that would help me solve that problem. And I go digging through my binder, which I still have. I graduated in 2018, but I still go back and reference stuff in there because I'm like, okay, yep. this is what I'm looking for. This is what it, where it is. And yes, it's been, you know, JBS is, is a, 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 how would I say, um, it's a gift that keeps on giving. Yeah, and it absolutely was a gift because at that point, Pastor's vision was to really make this, you know, available to people, right? Obviously, we had to write an essay and to put ourselves out there, but to be selected was a blessing and it's free, save some very small graduation costs. That is a blessing. That is absolutely sowing a seed into the kingdom of God. So I'm I'm just grateful. It was an all around good experience. Awesome. Awesome. So circling back to your business, I would 
asked, how would you say you differentiate from your competitors, if there are any in this? Yeah, this so, yeah. yeah I apologize for cutting you off. So, so the, on the internal side of it, which is going back to JBS, from a foundational perspective, I was doing this before and absolutely reinforce your school. I pray before every class. And my clients are not necessarily Christians, although there's always some Christians in that space. But I pray for before every class and I ask God through the Holy Spirit, show me what this particular group needs. I've got the curriculum, right? It is my job to study. That's the business. But to really ask the Spirit of the Lord to help me to tailor that experience to the folks that he knows are going to be in there. So that may not be a differentiator externally for people to see, but it totally makes a difference on the results that I receive. And I, I say this with humility. I get really great results from the participants because they feel the love of God, the non-judgmental spirit that's there to really help them achieve their goals. Um, externally, I don't know that I can say I have so many differentiators, like people who are good in this business, you have to be really great at facilitation. I really work to make certain that it is a learning centered around the students, the participants, the adults in that space. It's not about me, it's about them. So I, again, if, if, if you've been doing this a while, you, you would know that, although not all training and trainers and facilitators are created equal. So I don't want to over talk it in that space, but I think the key differentiator for me is the spiritual aspect. I know that if I'm in a, a non-Christian environment, I have to tailor things for that audience's needs, but I will even put scripture in there. I don't say first John chapter, you know what I mean? I may, I may say, so, you know, so, so you think, so you are. So let's talk about what we're thinking about. So I try to use the word of God, even in corporate settings, the secular world to enhance the experience so that I can still be bridging both the Christian aspect and the corporate aspect in the space to help these people, whether they know it or not, really get to a place where they're starting to make some internal connections to the content and hopefully drive external tra transformation. So, wow. yeah, that's yeah. Uh, that's very insightful in terms of not necessarily quoting the scripture to the non-believing non-believing customers you have who are not Christians, but injecting, you know, the mindset you know, the framework of what the Bible is all about is about, you know, where he, he, where he, he, where he has already placed us, not yes. where we are. So you're the communication what you just mentioned right now, how you're communicating and some, some of the examples you just cited right now, it's more of, let's not talk about what's going on right now, but where you want to go, but yeah. speak as if you're already there now. You yeah. Know, kind of interesting. Yeah. And if I could say this, I learned this, uh, what I'm about to say from Pastor Winston many years ago, many years ago. I remember him saying God's work or his principles will work for anybody. The principles will work for anybody. And so when I think about some of these books that people read and they come up with all these principles, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's a play on Proverbs. That's a play on the word of God. So it's important. And again, I, I call that a differentiator because I get to bridge my beliefs in business in a way that just as people who are non-believers do, they take these principles that God speaks about and they put them in a book. It's, it's a secular book and people go wild about it because it's really challenging something in them on a spiritual level. They just don't know it. So it's really me trying to infuse the principles of God in these secular spaces to drive an experience. And I think that's really critical. That is, that is. I'm, I'm super excited that you said that because I, I, I hope, you know, our audience, when they listen to this recording, I, I, I hope they catch that to realize that you can do that. You know, yeah. you know, just because we're Christians doesn't mean we cannot operate as Christians in our businesses yeah. and those um, personal convictions um, how we operate as Christians into our business. Um, yeah. And that's what you just cited there, which is very, very important. Um, yeah. From a work-life balance, um, as a full-time entrepreneur, how do, you, how, do you, how do you approach that and what do you recommend um, to our listeners in terms of, you know, don't burn out, you know, have enough time to stop and smell the roses? What is your, what is your approach? Well, first and foremost, I would say to many, many listeners, you have to have discipline. 
So that's the start right there, because if you are used to working in a nine to five, if you will, and somebody is holding you accountable, the first thing as entrepreneurs, um, and especially if you're a solopreneur, is you have to develop discipline and structure. And that means that sometimes we have to, you know, set boundaries with our family members and friends. Mostly for me, it's my family, and I'm not that good at that. But in terms of burnout, I mean, I don't know that I have any special formula. When I have to be on, I invest that time. And then when I'm off, I'm off. So if I got project that, you know, deliverables that have to be done and I need to do 12, 13, 14 hours, that's what I got to do, you know, but that doesn't have to be my daily life. So I think the most important thing to that, you know, this, this expansive amount of work that we find ourselves doing, especially when we're the marketing department, sales, customer service, the, sure. the talent and all of that is developing the structure. So I, if that's something that I have to hold myself accountable to constantly so that I can stay focused, because we also do have a life outside of our business. We still have family that needs us, right? I do things for me members of my family. You know, we've got a house that we have to take care of. So really having structure and focus and accountability to yourself is really important. Yeah, I, I totally agree. It's like, for example, yesterday, I, 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 I met with a customer yesterday at noon. Mm -hmm. And for a long time, I would just work through my Saturday. But I got home yesterday and I said, I kind of like made up my mind. I, I'm just going to watch movies with my son. And yeah. I think it was 1030 last night I, and I was about to start another one. My wife was like, aren't you going to church tomorrow? <laughs> I'm like, okay, we should, we should stop after four movies. <laughs> <laughs> right. You've been sometimes, right? But I, I think that's really important. So again, there's times when I need to work more. And there's times when my father's like, dude, do you ever stop working? So, <laughs> so anyways, I do think it's healthy that we have balance, you know? Um, so yeah, sometimes you just binge watch a TV show or movie and I'm okay with that. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes you just got to close the door and get it done. Yes. Yes. Um, I'm advocate for both of them. Um, yeah. In, in, in terms of support network, how do you like you mentioned, you wear many hats. A lot of us solopreneurs wear many hats. Um, mm -hmm. What's your thought on support networks that align with your goals, um, your faith? What's your What's your thoughts on that? Well, I'm I'm blessed, and I and I mean I'm not the only blessed person, but I I, I started that way because my mom is a big cheerleader. My daughters are cheerleaders. You know, we hold each other accountable. My mom gets on top of me when I share my goals and my dreams. She's like, okay, she checks in with me. Um, people that I've worked with in the past that are you know, still part of my inner network, particularly one good friend of mine, she, she's like a cheerleader. She's been a cheerleader for me when we worked together in my role as leadership. Um, when I went down the path of entrepreneurship, she's been a support system for me since then. I just, I, I'm surrounded by people who really understand um, and forgive me if you can hear my dogs barking in the background, but I'm surrounded by a group of people who support the work that I do. Even another friend of mine who I've been friends for quite a few years, she she's not the entrepreneur type. She's going to stick with her job until she retires because she's got a good job, but she still supports the work that I do. Okay. So I, I just I just appreciate that people who pray for me, you know, people who hold me accountable. I I think that's so critical, you know, that's, that's a blessing to me. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. I, I know as, as entrepreneurs, it's very important that we, we celebrate yeah. little wins and big wins um, mm -hmm. on this journey, um, on the entrepreneurship journey. Um, yeah. Would you, can you share um, in the early days of your, of your, of your business, as it, as you described it, some early wins that you are you're like till today whenever you go back and look at it you're like wow that was fantastic and can you share one or two of those yeah and, and i'm and i'm gonna i want to frame it this way dapo in my early days i didn't believe in myself and the work that i did so i would probably say that it took me probably four years four and a half years since actually starting the business up until the place where I actually resigned in my heart that I'm good enough because God made me that way, period. And it started to shift the level of authenticity that I can have when I showed up. 
for my clients and the work that I do and the belief that I had in my ability, not because I'm so great, but because God is great in me. So I don't know that I would call that an early win. It's probably a later win, but it was the journey. And I think that journey is so important because so many people who decide to go down this path, some, some are completely invested in the fact that they got this. Others who can relate to what I'm saying are on that path, but honestly, they've been operating under the spirit of fear. Hmm. And so I didn't, I can't say that that was an early win for me, but it was certainly a win that really freed me to really do greater work That's because true. I believe in me now, because I know he believes in me. Amen. You know? So that, yeah, I don't know that I have a bunch of other little wins. I mean, I'm sure if I think hard enough about it, I can find some things, but that was really important because it, 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 I think it keeps you from really unleashing your destiny and purpose. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it, I, I'm glad you said that because even myself, sometimes I question, can I actually do this? Yeah. You know? um, how big is my vision? Am I, am I thinking like a local champion? Am I thinking too small? You know, yeah. how big should I be thinking? You know, Dr. Winston challenges always would challenge us to think big, yes. you know, and he does, he's a big thinker, you know, <laughs> and what you just said, you know, the fear of, of, am I good enough? Can I do this? You know, yeah. surrounding yourself with the, the right like-minded people, um, being yoked with the ministry of Dr. Winston, who has yeah. multiple businesses. He's not just a man of God. He's an entrepreneur. Even in that building, you could see all the stuff he's doing. So Mm -hmm. I, 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 I'm in alignment with what you said and just breaking free of fear, knowing that yeah. God, you know, has equipped us to do this and he's, he's on board. We just have to, we have to be on board. <laughs> Absolutely. That's so true. I, and a more recent win that, um, I was so proud was it, it can be counterproductive to the person depending on how they look at it, but there was this large account and I'm a solopreneur, <laughs> but there was this large account uh, that I had an opportunity to put a bid in for. And I didn't get it because I really didn't have the staff for it. But the win for me is, Doppel, that was a time when I would have been like, oh, I can't do that. Uh, oh, it's too big for me. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I and did, wouldn't have even applied, right, or even started the process because I was too busy canceling myself out from the beginning. So that was a win for me. I mean, yeah, it didn't go the way I wanted, but I was grateful that I wasn't afraid. That was a win. And I'm just excited, right? Because I know me a few years ago, I would have never even, I would have been like, yeah, nah. Yeah. Mm -mm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's a good thing. That is, um, they say 50, showing up is 50% of the journey. You know, showing up <laughs> mentally first and then showing up physically for, because I've been, in my journey as an entrepreneur, I've been in some events with other entrepreneurs who mm -hmm. applied but did not show up because, again, mm -hmm. one thing to apply that you have to show up, you know. But in your case, right. you're just talking about getting through the first one, the, the, the mindset of, like, can I actually do this, you know. And I'm glad that you share that because it is it is real. That yeah that you just discussed right there, it is real and it is holding a whole bunch of entrepreneurs back from yeah. breaking through, from fulfilling their destiny. It is, it is real. It is a real thing. It is a real thing. Yeah. Well, I can add though, the blessing of that is also after that experience, I started doing things I needed to do, reaching out to other people that I know are very gifted facilitators and trainers and starting to build some partnerships so that when these opportunities present themselves again, I actually can present a team of people that I know would be willing. And it's just so funny how those things just sound kind of aligned. And another partnership opportunity where, you know, I could, you know, still have my company or organization as the front lead for a particular contract, but behind me is a whole nother organization. Obviously, there's some financial impacts to that, but still being able to have the resources of a whole organization to, to be a partner with Progeny One 
to be able to bid for those things. So it really was a good experience. I don't, I don't discount it. It made me do some work and open up my mindset to things that we need to do as entrepreneurs. We don't have to do it all by ourselves. There's partnerships out there that we may need to look at. Um, and God will place those people and those opportunities strategically in our face. We just have to be open to receiving them. So that experience uh, was really beneficial to me on so many levels, even though I didn't get the account, it created other things for me. And that was good. That's yes, that is. Yeah, I'm just making some notes here and I'm like, OK, this is this is gold. It just said right there is gold. So for when it comes to. I, I always ask this question when it comes to aspiring, aspiring entrepreneurs, what what advice would you give them at, as they're going into, especially kingdom minded, aspiring and um, entrepreneurs, what advice would you give them? Yeah, I think if somebody watches this, I think the most important thing that I've said above everything is know that you're good enough because God made you that way. It doesn't mean that you don't have to grow in the area of your giftings. It doesn't mean that in terms of your entrepreneurship journey, there's not learning that has to take place. But when you really believe that the father, like he says, I'm with you, right? When you believe that he's deposited these gifts in you and he wants you to mine those gifts and do something with them. And when you believe that your value is based on how he sees you and not how other people perceive you or even how you perceive yourself, then I think you'll be free to be able to start the process of really starting to seek out things in your life that has been your calling the whole time. So I, I think that's probably the most powerful experience for any new entrepreneur starting right there, knowing who you are in this process. I'm not saying don't move until you know. I'm saying the momentum and the freedom, yeah. um, it expands when you recognize that God is for you and he has validated who you are. So that's Amen. what I'd say to, to newer entrepreneurs. Amen. Amen. Wow. Yeah. Well, you know, the thing about these recordings is that we're at that time again. <laughs> yeah. So I want to I want to ask you one question. Yeah. Where can our listeners find you online? Yep. So I am on LinkedIn. So you can look me up under Sabrina Smith, uh, and I'm under Progeny One. Uh, so Sabrina Smith Progeny One LLC on LinkedIn. I also have a website. I'm actually rebuilding my website. That's another thing. You know, we have to make certain that our tools and resources are up to date and standard, but my website is www.progeny1.training. Um, so that's that's another place or presence for me. And of course, if somebody just wanted to reach out to ask questions um, about how I might be able to be of service to them and their organizations, you can reach me at sabrina at progeny1.training. Awesome. Yep. Well, there you, have, there you have it, everyone. Again, thank you so much, Sabrina, for being a part of this journey in the JVSAA journey. I want to say thank you so much for your time on this lovely, warm Chicago afternoon. I said warm, jokingly. <laughs> you got it. 50 degrees is warm. <laughs> no. I know. You and I, we know it's not warm out there. <laughs> I'm serious, Dapo. When you're used to 20, negative 20, you know, zero, seven, 50 is short time. I, I have shorts on, but I certainly didn't even have a coat on when I went to church today. So I'm just saying. I hear you. I hear you. I'll, I'm just, I'll just, you know, I don't know. I'm just being facetious with the whole weather stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so Sabrina, I want to thank you so much for your time. Thank you again for joining us. We cannot wait to celebrate your wins and your journey. Thank you for being an awesome JBS alumni as usual. God bless. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And thank you. The, the thanks is really from my heart to yours. Thank you all for doing this for us. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm.